you for coming along again watch another video from us um, it's my turn this time and this is more of a burn and colour video I got given Andy gave me last year a nib specialist nib from razor tip and this is a wax resist nib and he bought it at Yandel's and they are the razor tip UK stockists it comes in a little packet there's the nib a uh, special needle and instructions on how to use it and you use this nib in conjunction with the BP pen I'm using it on the razor tip P80 um, however in the instructions it mentions about turning the temperature dial down to number two now that would be for the analog machines such as the SSD 10 um, I had to play with the temperature a little bit on the P80 and uh, I sort of settled on a temperature of 380. Now you'll see here this is the needle I just wanted to see how it, easy it was to go in give it a few twists and it locates into the inner part of the nib and it's just for clearing wax out I thought I may use this quite a bit in fact I didn't use it at all um, it work to treat so I was very pleased with that it was very easy to set up um, the only thing I would say is that you've got a pyrography nib that's very hot and you're filling it with wax which is very hot and you want to make sure that when you're working that you're keeping that nib upright those are just some beeswax um, pellets that I had I think I bought them at eBay or Amazon. They were quite reasonable. Um, I've had a tub of them for a couple of years. I use them on different projects. Um, I did actually cut the wax nibs in half at the start. But actually, as I was using, I was replenishing the nib. And I actually found that I actually just lay a whole pellet on top and it melted very easily. Um, once you got going so I'm just waiting for the temperature and just sorting it out little test on my beanbag cushion um, I've already done some pyrography on these uh, beads and I'm going for a if you like a, a sort of an ethnic wax resist look on these beads and I've been playing with different designs and I actually thought well today I'll have a good play I've just completed an oil painting, so um, I had to concentrate on that. And it's nice to have a little bit of freedom just to just to play and and find out how these things work. So that's today's setup. I was really surprised. There was no splatter. It was a nice solid line of wax. It didn't drip out. It was totally controllable, and uh, a pleasure to use and it, um, you can just see there there's some some slight wavy lines you'll just see at the uh, at the bottom of that bead and uh, just continue to sort of uh, play I've done two two or three beads I did a, a round sort of dot design and a wavy design and some detail on the leaves so my theory is that I will now spray some colour on uh, say so I've already done some pyro on a square bead and I've just wax resist that I haven't coloured that one this time that's uh, that's for another day but just set these I've got these cones and they make really really good paint stands for beads and uh, just a quick airbrush with uh, chestnut spirit stains in turquoise and royal blue and yes i get the royal blue everywhere as usual uh, i didn't bother blending the colors in the middle i um i was going to dry brush over these beads anyway so this is the royal blue and uh, just a light covering i didn't use a brush to stain the beads because i felt that that would leach underneath the wax and not give as crisp a detail but a light covering with the airbrush that just seemed to me the right thing to do I could give some nice light coverage doesn't go deep into the um, wood but also it's it's not heavy enough it's going to leach or run 
Now I've forgotten to turn the video on so I've already dry brushed the turquoise on both the beads and I'm using a couple of paints from the metallic paint range they were acrylics from Chestnut and also the turquoise from the iridescent range and that's the dark blue from the metallic range there are a couple of blues in the iridescent range uh, but I wanted this deeper blue it gives more of a denim blue effect if you like um, so that just shows the iridescence and I'm just going to dry brush that dark blue give the bottles a really good shake there's a nice big old ball bearing in there and it really does mix the colours well and you can see there the uh, the difference in the blues so that's the dark blue on the left just dry blush dry blushing dry brushing um, the other one now um, the brushes I use these yellow handled ones they're just a Taclon bristle brush they're as cheap as chips they're from the range they come in a box you get loads of them in there different sizes now you do you pays your money you take your choice but the bristle aspect they're brilliant however the metal ferrule we've had quite a few of those part company from their nice yellow wooden handle so a little bit of a uh, bit of glue and they stick back up but I don't use really good brushes on the woodwork I keep those for my canvas paintings so my oil brushes and my acrylic brushes that I use um, on the on the canvases are kept separately in a way and uh, I've got specific brushes that are just for doing the woodwork because uh, they tend to get forgotten about they dry up so I'm not going to pay money on an expensive brush uh, just a quick wash and wipe and then uh, on with the white they, they appear to be quite transparent these colors but they've got such a heavy pigment and a good luster the luster is amazing um, but with this white you'll see in a minute I'm going to use it just to blend the middle out where the um, the wood natural wood colouring is and um, you'll see in a minute that it actually doesn't matter if you brush it onto the other colours because it kind of blends them a little bit and uh, I, I get a little bit ahead of myself in a minute you'll notice so you'll see there you can see the natural wood colour and I just want to give that a luster just to carry it on because it's already there with the turquoise and what I'll do with these beads, I'll make them into necklaces. I've been, um, I'm always playing with things. So up in the evening, I've been doing some Japanese and Chinese knot work, and I'm going to incorporate that into some necklaces. And uh, just a couple of accent beads. But um, I'll I'll do that, and I'll post some pictures on our Instagram page uh, all the Instagram details are on our home page uh, because we uh, Andy and I have separate accounts for sort of what well, his is wood as well as everything else and uh, mine tends to be um, more my other paintings etc and that's the burn paint create uh, handle so just dry brushing this one I was so enthralled in doing this project that I didn't drink my coffee. My coffee was cold by the end of it, but sometimes it gets like that. So just waiting for that to dry and I think, oh, I'll take the wax off. How can I get the wax off? Oh, if I melt it, is the colour on the wax going to go onto the wood and all that detail lost? What shall I do? So I get a sharp scalpel and tried taking it off, which was working. I had to be very careful that I didn't cut into the wood and peel the um the acrylic off so it was a little bit time consuming but it it kind of worked if you want to zone out and take your time over something i can see it being quite practical but you'd still need to melt the wax off because there's still residual wax in there 
So in a, in a minute you'll see um, I revert to heat and then I stop heat and I start painting again because what did I forget to do? You can see there the difference. So, um, uh, oh, we have a bit of heat. Let's have a bit of heat. So I started melting it. And actually, you'll see later on, I carry on melting. Um, but it was actually at this stage that I realised, oh, I've forgotten something. And what have I forgotten? What have I forgotten? Oh, what have I forgotten to do? You're on your edge of your seat now, aren't you? So, I already started getting a technique there, heating up and rolling onto the tissue. Something I remembered from school. If you heat the wax, blot it onto tissue and if you're doing batik work that, that or you, it actually handy household hint if you've dripped wax onto your carpet get some tissue and iron through it you'll lift your wax works a treat believe me had to rescue a friend's velvet dress once oh uh, so yes i got the paintbrush out and actually remembered i had some green leaves to paint so just did that very quickly and uh, i do love that green look at that bottle of green isn't it lovely so yes, green leaves, just to pick those out a little bit. And um, you'll see in a minute that we start melting the wax again. Now it doesn't take long for these acrylics to dry. Um, you're putting such a thin coat on that that first bead is already dry so I've got no qualms at all about handling it about melting that wax off because I know that that's set so unless you're putting thick layers of paint or you're using a gesso or you're using um, some kind of molding medium uh, underneath then you would need to make sure that your paint is set but this is just um the, the heater i've got is is just from card making and it does a really good job it's a little bit warmer than using a hair dryer and i wouldn't hold it over your hand for too long you don't want to heat the bead up too much because the acrylic paint will start blistering so make sure you you're constantly moving you're only heating wax up so constantly move the heat i wouldn't use a flame and uh i say if you haven't got one of these heat guns a, a what well, a hair dryer will do it so i'm literally dabbing rolling heating rolling dabbing until no more wax is showing on that tissue and it worked a treat and so i've got so many ideas now that have come up with doing this today that um i'm really looking forward to getting my next big project out of the way i might incorporate some of this into that actually um i know there's going to be some airbrushing in it and uh but i I'm quite I've got quite a way to go on that so whether it's something I keep going in and out of I don't know and just doing some more of these smaller projects but uh, in a minute I'll show you some photos of these beads uh, after we've done this uh, Andy will do the finishing on them so uh, they'll get a few coats of lacquer and uh, then he'll buff them and they'll be all shiny and they'll be ready for beading so just get the uh, the dotty one done 
so next time I do this I am going to stain underneath and then do the wax but in the meantime there you go there they are so like subscribe leave a comment if you want but thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time thanks for now